Welcome to another photo book critique. This time we have some special. It is Kita Hararia from NGT48. And as she is graduating soon, we have her photo book that's been long awaited finally coming out. So we finally have it here. And this is a little bit interesting because this is actually shot by the photographer of some of my favorite photo books. Of the ones I have, it is Ikuta Erika and Nagahama Neru. And Nagahama Neru being the top two of 2017. So you can say I have high hopes for this photo book. So just looking at the photo book, Kita Harariya, super experienced and does really well in this. And we have the photographer who's really good. And we have the theme, which I mean, both of them know the theme and they're not embarrassed to show it in this. And I'm not gonna cover every single photo like I do every single photo book. I'm gonna call out the ones that I see. And if you wanna see all the photos for yourself, I personally recommend picking this one up. Again, picking it up, looking at it, flipping through the pages, getting that little mood of flipping through it is really worth it. And I think it's like a thousand times better than looking at it online. So let's go ahead and start with this cover. First of all, I have to say I really enjoy this rose gold that they have over here. I think it's a really nice touch. And now onto this. This is the front cover. Now this doesn't really help explain a lot about the photo book. I feel like this is a nice, simple, and clean photo cover. Nothing really that shows off what the photo book is about. I mean, we do know it's about Kita Hararia, so there is that. But maybe we get a little bit of symbology here with her eating the apple, kind of like, you know, temptation, sort of like that but I might be thinking a little bit too far ahead on that. Looking at the back, we get to see a little bit closer of an example of what we're going to see inside. And this one from this set of photos is like my second favorite. And that's because of all the highlights, highlighting all the muscle, highlighting the body, highlighting everything, and then just her sticking out in front of it. I really do enjoy this photo. And now looking at the inside cover, we get to see this right here, which is her looking at the big city over here. So already good signs that we're going to see a little bit more about the environment and her in it. But flipping it, we get to see her walking away, which is a nice symbology for her finally leaving the group and moving on. And especially being at the very end of the photo book, like you finally finish it, and then you look on the inside and you see her leaving. I think this is really great. First page we open up and this one is super close to the middle. I don't know exactly if I like that. You have to kind of like open it up a little bit more in order to see her fully. But having this being the opening page, I think is really nice because we get to see a little bit more of the environment, see where she is because already from the beginning, we get to see like, you know, no, no stuff about her flying, about her being in the group. We get to see, bam, just her in the environment already. And I mean, already wearing casual clothes, just walking around with everything there. And here we go, white pages. These two, I imagine were like, oh man, I wanna make it big, but you know, because of the middle parts, it's kind of hard to do. I think, again, having it to the side, I mean, this happened in Neto's photo book, so I think it's okay to put it on the side. And in these, I mean, the shirt is a little blown out, but that's okay. Because I think they're compensating for the skin color and for the background. So personally, it doesn't affect me too much if this is blown out like this. As long as it's not totally blown out, I'm okay. Next up, we have two images which kind of contrast each other because this is warm and this is a little bit cooler. This is blurry and this is sharp. I mean, really, this one's like super blurry. This is like motion blur. Yeah, you should be way too low for this one. But I do like that these two are in environments. And this one right here being surrounded by flowers kind of gives that symbology again of graduating and finally leaving. Kind of how they give flowers to people who are leaving. At least that's how I see it. I don't know if that was the intention of this. They're probably just walking around, saw a flower shop and took a picture there. But it's all about how you interpret the art, right? Next up we get a little bit more interesting angles because with these, we usually don't see it from below up. If you shoot like this, it's a little bit kind of giving them more power. We usually see the opposite for idle photo books where it's a little bit down where you're overseeing them. But in this case, since it is Kitaharia, I do see the point of doing this. These two actually do like a lot because they're experimenting with different angles and trying different things. And I feel like this whole mood just fits along with it. And knowing Kitaharia, she's on points with all of these poses. And most of the poses in here, I usually don't have a complaint about. But seriously, these, these two are great, especially from this angle. I feel like, especially this one, like looking down and with the light and everything, it works really well. And then we get something where it actually looks good in the water. I mean, finally, right? Usually in photo books, we see a lot of people in the water 
and then the body being a little disfigured. But in this one, I think they did it really well because the water is so blue that you can't really see the inside. You kind of see it, but it's sort of like this shape over here, which only helps. It doesn't really negatively impact the photo. But having it all about her and not about the water, just having the water as a complementary factor works really well in this example. And plus the hair being like a little bit wet is a really nice touch. Then we have two second apart photos. Again, not a real big fan of these. This is the cover, so I feel like with the cover that was just enough. Sometimes I see it necessary to have it inside. I have little alternate takes of it. But for this one, I feel like with the front cover it was like, like I said, just enough. Next are these in the hotel room. Now this one I like a lot because again, it is stretching of the legs, making her look really long and slender. Not really sure how the apple comes into play with all of these. Kind of wish there wasn't an apple there because it kind of draws the attention a little. So especially in this one, your eye goes straight to the red because everything else is kind of dull colored. But then when you have something red, it really distracts in the photo and really makes your eye go towards it. Now if this were black and white, your eye really wouldn't go to that. It'd go to the lightest part, which is over here and her. But since it's in color, the red really pops out. Which is why usually in other photo books when they're wearing red outside, like in a touristy area, they kind of stick out because they're wearing the red. Then we have this one right here, which is sort of like the back cover that we've seen. Although this one is a little bit different take on it. I feel like I like the other one better because all of the light wraps around her and in this one it's just the beginning. In the other one we get to see a little bit more definition in the body, which I think I prefer more than this one. Next up we see an example of how Kita Hararia really knows her angles and really knows how to model after all those years of doing it. We see this one right here and seeing how she knows how to bend her arms and how to position herself, this is really good because right here we get to see like this coming inside. Again, like I say before, you get the curve for the S curves when people model and that makes them look a little bit more curvy, especially in women, that's better. And in this case, we get to see this coming inside and then the hips coming out, it's kind of giving that curve. So really nice of her and I already know she's good at posing and she probably did this on purpose. Next up is this collage of images right here and I have to say there are a couple favorites of mine in here. I have to say my top two of the images is starting with this one because I mean the face she has in this is really nice. Another example of how Kita Hararia knows how to model, she knows how to position herself. I mean the face is turning towards the light and then her body is turning a little bit away in the shadow, giving definition to the body but yet giving enough light to the face. And it's just overall really good. I like how they use the angles right here to make the line go straight towards her. Everything in the background is blurry, causing no distractions in the background and going straight towards her. Really, really nice. This one is in contestant for a favorite photo of the photo book. And next up we have this one. This one's just a really nice personality one. And I feel like there haven't been really too much of this kind of personality in this. So having this in here is really nice. This one is similar to this one over here, but I feel like this one says a lot more, especially with the lights and the dark sides of it. Next up we get this nice little contrast, which is this one with the camera looking down on her and this one with her looking down at you. I feel like this is a nice little transition over here and plus we get to see the different environments that there are. Right here is like in a little river and right here looks like she's in a jungle. Again, as we see Kita Hararia knows her angle, so she knows that putting her arms a little bit in will cause the shape to be a little bit more curvy. And in this one she does it too, kind of giving her more of a slim appearance because there's nothing else sticking out. And plus this little highlight over here with the rim light is really nice. And also I want to mention that the wardrobe she's wearing actually matches really well with the environment. Like the yellows, the green, the brown, really goes along with what's going around around here. So like look at the water over here, look at the plants, look at the trees, everything really mixes in well. Next up we get these two images and these two images are close to each other but not super close because this one's like super blurred and this one's super in focus. As we can see everything is in focus here and I just wish these lines were straight. I feel like if they're a little bit straight it'd be cool. I don't know if they straightened the umbrella or if they straightened something else but these lines aren't straight and they're kind of like throwing me off a little bit. But I do have to say out of these two, I actually like this one. I usually like more shallow depth of field, but in this one I feel like the colors really work well together. And kind of the pose she's holding is a little bit more unique. This one's kind of holding up the umbrella, having a pose like this, kind of giving these different angles around in the photo, and plus even her hips out like that, giving out a little bit more in there. Here's another good two. These two are actually both with shallow depth of field and low shutter speed. We can tell it's low shutter speed because the people back here are a little bit blurry. So for this photo, she pretty much had to stay perfectly still for this. And I mean, looking at the environment, it looks like it's really, really low light. 
So using the light to the advantage, we get to see over here this big light over here and the light coming from over here, kind of giving her a little bit more light. Plus in the eyes, we can see the reflection that there is light there. So using the environment to the advantage of this dark scene. And I really like this pose right here. I really like like the straight flowiness of it, kind of like you're in this environment, but yet you're still flowing a little bit. Then we get to move on to a little bit more playful over here with her like buying the shirts and everything. I feel like this is just a nice personality one, but yet showing, you know, she has both sides. She isn't one flat character. She's a round character and she has a lot to say about her, whether her traits and the things she does. And plus again, always having white in these type of scenes is always nice. And just like in the other ones from before that it didn't show, she has jeans on and it's a whole sequence involving this. So again, pick up the photo book if you want to see that. Then we move on to a little bit more in the moment shots. And this one, for example, looks like she's drinking some tea, you know, just enjoying it, just slurping away. And then this one, this one feels really like in the moment. This one feels like she was like looking at something and then like everything just lined up perfectly. And then they took the picture, especially with it looking away. It really gives off that feeling. And plus it's a very relaxed wardrobe and everything. And like you could tell it's in a room where she doesn't like really go to a lot. So this is really like in the moment and like this is Kitaharariya in the moment. Now remember how I said that the back cover was my second favorite shot of that shoot? Well this one is my number one favorite because we get to see even more of that blinding light coming in. Kind of making her look heavenly and making everything again look shapely. But not as shapely as the other one because the other one had more shadows. This one's a little bit more light and as you can tell it's a little bit overblown like you can see in the skin. Like if I were to lower my aperture right now you'd be able to see like almost the same effect but it wouldn't work because of the background. So in this it's a little bit different thanks to the shadows being in the other one that one really helps give shape. But then this one kind of has like a heavenly or very soft feeling to it which is a little bit different than the other photos we've seen. Well, we have this one. This one, I feel like we've seen something similar to this before, but this is in the staircase. And I like this little take of it. This is like a little bit messing around with the angles, messing around with the environment. And we get to see over here more detail. Plus it's spiraling up over here to finally leading to her is a really nice touch. And again, Kita Harariya knowing her posing. And I mean, she's just really good at posing. <laughs> Next we move on to some on-camera flash lighting and you guys know that I usually don't like on-camera flash lighting or at least that sort of appeal to it but this one I have to say this one is not that bad. I think the main reason being that they're so close to the background usually when I see the ones that I don't like it's usually farther away from the background and you see the shadows messing around like way back there but for this one being so close to the actual background we get to see that over here it's not that bright of a light or at least the settings on the cameras weren't that low to make it such a pop and make the background so dark. But again, that's thanks to her being so close and it being a white wall and everything reflecting on it. I think this is really nice because it still has a little bit of shape to the body. Like as we can see over here, we get to see a little bit more definition here. So it isn't that bad. And plus I think the black and the black and the black really contrast against this white over here. So I think in that aspect, the colors really work with it as well as it being so close to the background that's white. Then we have this series of images, which I was really curious about when I first saw. I don't know if we needed all of these and I still think we don't need all of these. I'm thinking maybe just this one would be cool. This one's a really nice posing one and this one's really one that you see in a magazine, like with the arm over here and with the water coming down and everything. Give me that very serious stare that's a little bit down. It's a really nice stare, making the eyes a little bit more open thanks to the pose she's holding. Yeah, I would definitely wanna see this one bigger for sure. Then here's another example of on-camera flash lighting that I don't like. This one isn't so close to the background, so we see a little bit more of the background. And again, it isn't my personal favorite. We do see some shape on the body, but I don't feel like it's the strongest example of this sort of lighting. The white wall helps lighten up the shadows and doesn't make it look too bad. Over here we get to see the shadow being a little bit darker. So this one's a little bit more distracting than it is on this one. I mean the pose really helps a lot with this type of lighting. I feel like not every type of pose can be put in this lighting. This pose right here, even though it's a little bit angular, I still feel like it fits. Maybe it fits with the angular because it's so sharp, just like the shadow is so sharp and not soft. Then move on to some of my favorite images and it's her with this traditional clothing. And I really like the feel of these photos. These photos feel really airy and soft and I really, really like them. I kind of wish they were placed a little bit before. Usually they have like the shower type images at the end, but in this case we get the nice soft ones at the end and 
I think I really like how it's going for that. Even though clearly storyline wise, these were probably taken before. But for this one, right here page all about Kitaharia and right here all blur. Maybe having her a little bit more over here. No, because if it's more over here, then it'd just be her face right here. So I feel like this is a nice cropping for it. Then move on to her outside. This looks like a 85 right here. Uh, maybe like a 1.4, 1.2. But again, with the traditional clothing, these two images right here look great. Being both in shadow, giving a nice soft light. And I mean, having everything like kind of bright, nothing really too dark in there, kind of gives the airy feeling again. Then we move on to more scenic photos. And this one's actually her in the environment actually talking to people, which I really enjoy. I do wish this photo right here was big. This is a really, really great smile from Ria, and I feel like this is like the most genuine smile we've seen. And it would have been really, really great to see this big. But I do understand why they wanted this whole thing together, kind of giving off that like she's in the environment interacting with people kind of vibe to it. Again, wish this image right here was bigger. This one's a fun one of her interacting as well as this one. Then move on to the very last photo, which I think is interesting, again, getting a different angle. Kind of like, hey, wait right there, I'll climb that building and then take a picture of you. Again, it's showing a lot of experimentation in this actual photo shoot, which is always, always great, especially when they pull it off like this. The shadows are a little bit too dark for my taste. I can tell they try to compensate a little because it's a little bit blown out over here. Having the shadows not so dark, but it's still a little bit too dark. But what else can you do when it's midday? and you're shooting, I mean, obviously the photographer knows what they're doing because the face is turning up and especially at a higher angle, able to get a little bit better light from the sun that's coming from straight up, which is like the worst lighting. And then we move on to a nice scenic shot of Vietnam over here, kind of showing off like this is the landscape, this is where she was, and I really like the color tone in this. If it was this cloudy, when they took this picture right here, then this image would have turned out super, super good. Because again, that soft light and everything would have been kind of even, kind of showing off the leaves, not having so much highlights and shadows in there, making it so contrasty. And making her show up right there would have been really nice. But then again, it's kind of hard to plan for that, especially when you have a couple of days to do a photo book shoot. And then like I said before, you close the photo book to reveal the end with her walking away. Really nice touch at the end to do. So that has been Kita Harariya's photo book. I actually think that was really good. <laughs> I really like how they had some examples of the actual environment without giving too much away. And plus those in the hotel room shots slash shower slash different parts of the room shots were, were pretty good coming from a fan's perspective. Again, if you're a fan of Kitaharia, this is like a 100% must get. Which I guess leads me to my recommendations of who should get this photo book. Of course, like I said before, Kitaharia fans should absolutely get this. NGT fans should get this, AKB fans should definitely get this. This is Kita Harariya we're talking about, of course, a legendary member. And in this photo book shows off all the skills that she learned from modeling and puts it into good use here. So for that reason alone you don't like it, then I don't know what else you want. So who else would I recommend this to? Let's see. Fans of cute girls? Oh yeah. Uh, let's see, what I recommend to idol fans? Yeah, I mean, she's a legendary member and plus this photo book is good enough to get. So I'm pretty much saying if you're interested in the photo book, get it. If you're like, oh hey, that photo looked good, then you could probably get it and enjoy the rest of the photos. Um, if you like Kitaharia in different clothing that I didn't really show that much, then you'll enjoy the photo book for sure. So there you have it. That's the people I recommend it to, which is pretty much everyone who enjoys photo books should pick this up because this is a really nice photo book. Very nice way to start off the year, 2018 with a nice photo book like this, really, really strong. Which kind of sets the bar for the other ones. So it's kind of hard, especially starting off with this great photo book. So if you enjoyed this photo book, go ahead and leave a like. Leave your comments down below of what you thought of the photo book if you picked it up. And you can go ahead and subscribe to keep up to date with the photo book critiques that I do, as well as the news videos that I do every single week. And go support me on Patreon. There's actually a tier which you can suggest a photo book and I'll go get it and make a critique of it and be able to show you only on Patreon. And if you want it to go up on YouTube, then you can go ahead and do that. Again, leave those comments down below. And as I say every single time, thank you all for watching.